including, of course, the Mayor of Greater Manchester, Andy Burnham, who's with us now. Hello to you, Mr Burnham. Um, looks as though it's all off. Doesn't look good, uh, does it? Um, and I just find myself asking the question, you know, why do they think they can treat people here in this way? This is a decision that should be taken with consultation, um, with a chance for people to put their, their view forward. You know, these kind of projects last more than the lifetime of a government. They go through different constituencies held by different parties. These are projects of huge national importance. They should not be make, made by people holed up in hotel rooms at a party conference. Um, I spoke to another Labour mayor um, who originally was hoping that it would go to Yorkshire uh, no more. Um, he was struggling to find the words to describe how he's feeling this morning. I think a lot of people feel like that, uh, Kay. Um, whatever people's views on HS2, I think people across the North will just be thinking, why do they think that they can just treat us in this way? Uh, why do the, the Conservative Party think they can... Uh, promise a new line across the north, not in one manifesto, not two, but three of their last manifestos, and then just just pull it in this in this way. I've obviously got to wait to see the detail of what they announce later, but I am very worried now that that new line across the north of England, which most people would say is one of the highest, if not the highest, transport priority in the country, now can't happen probably in my lifetime. And honestly, I, I find that kind of profoundly depressing and wrong because it just means the generations coming after me will be saddled with those long, disrupted, crowded journeys across the Pennines. Why? Why should they put up with that? Why do we not get a new north-south line and a new uh, east-west line? What, London gets the Elizabeth line. London gets HS2. Why do we always get treated our second-class citizens by the Whitehall and Westminster machine. Well, the Prime Minister would say, hold, hold your horses, Mr Mayor. Wait and see what I've got to say in my speech. I, I guess he would say that, and I will. And I, I did say a moment ago, I will wait and see. I, I'm, I'm not hopeful. But the reason why I'm reacting in the way that I am, Kay, is that I'm in the dark. They've not brought me in at all i have no idea what they are doing so all i can do is see the speculation and speak up for my city region and then try and obviously represent feeling more more broadly across across the north you know we're, we're shut out of this and we don't know the detail but if they if they scrap hs2 they're, they're ripping the heart out of what is called northern powerhouse rail now i i would like to be proven wrong i would love to be surprised when the prime minister stands up today and actually says, no, we're doing Northern Powerhouse Rail, we're doing it like this, and it's going to be built within 10 or 15 years. You know, I would applaud that, but I hope you'll understand why I feel as I do this morning. I don't think it's right that a, a city region with a proud tradition as ours, as you've just shown in the film before this interview, should be kind of shut out in this, in this way. I've never, in my 30 years in politics, seen a situation where a party comes to a city for its conference and leaves an axe hanging over that place the days while it's here and then drops that axe on it as it as it's about to leave. I've never seen that before in all of my time in politics. And I've never seen a government take what are long, very long term uh, national decisions, as I say, cooped up in hotel rooms at a party conference. That That is something I have never seen in British politics before. What about shiny new travel that he might promise, uh, trans-Bennine travel? Um, if he does that in his speech, um, do, you, do you think that he will stick by his word? Well, we've had lots of promises before. You might remember George Osborne came to Manchester and promised us the earth with a northern powerhouse. That was a decade ago. Uh, HS2, HS3, uh, none of it's been delivered. Uh, Boris Johnson stood in front of Stevenson's rocket, no less. Um, in the Museum of Science and Industry and promised the same. That wasn't done. So you can forgive us for feeling uh, a little uh, jaundiced when it comes to these, these promises that keep being made. And I don't see how the new line can be done if you kind of rip out the, the infrastructure that's currently being legislated for in Parliament, because it will just set the back any new line if they're going to do it on a different route. So you can see why we'll take these 
kind of so-called promises with a very hefty pinch of salt. And actually what they are saying about HS2 in Birmingham, they're saying now it will click into the West Coast mainline there and kind of you'll speed up to Birmingham and then trundle up the West Coast mainline to Manchester. How is that going to work? How, how are we going to find the capacity on an already congested West Coast mainline to get those HS2 trains up to Manchester? So you'll forgive us for thinking that this, this hasn't been properly uh, thought through and explains why we are a little sceptical, to say the least, about it all. The government this morning in the form of the former Transport Secretary, now Defence Secretary Grant Shapp, saying don't blame us, blame Covid. Well, I'm sorry, uh, that isn't good enough. They've been in charge of this project or these projects uh, for um, 13 years. They have made repeated promises in manifestos to the north of England. Um, they spent billions putting HS2 under fields in the southern half of the country because of uh, protests from Tory MPs. They, they have been responsible for the spiralling costs. And so, you know, it's not... Uh, it's not good enough for them to come and say, oh, well, it's none of it's our fault. They do this all the time, but it is it is their, their fault. They have overseen uh, the chaos because it is a mess. It is a mess the way that they've handled this this whole this whole project. And, you know, it's just it's just a really sad thing that it's um, that it's come to this. They'll be standing. The prime minister will be standing in front of a sign today in the conference hall saying, I think, long term decisions for a brighter future. Wasn't HS2 wants a long term direction for the country and Northern Powerhouse Rail? I don't see long term decisions at this conference. I see short term, desperate decisions from a dying government. OK, I think we're saying we're in, you're in Warrington today. You're in Lee. I recognise that picture behind you, don't I? I, I am in Goldbourne is where I am, uh, Kay, which I think you will, yeah. you will know. In the, I know Wigan very well there. indeed. My sister's just down the road. It's good to see you. Thanks very much, Andy. Good luck. Thanks. Let's see what he has to say and we'll chat Let's to you again. Let's see what he has Thank to you. say.